Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alva. If there is one constant within the world of independent games development, it is this. Always be respectful to your community. Actually, that doesn't just tie into independent games development. But treat your customers and the community they will invariably form around your game, if it's a good one, with a basic level of human decency and understanding, and it will earn you a great deal of respect. However, there are the dirty devs and the asset flippers of the world that have a very different set of ideals. Those that attempt to abuse the Steam platform for pure base greed while delivering a product to gamers that is so completely bereft of merit or worth that to call them a scam, sham, shill, or to label their product complete and utter trash is still far too kind in essentially every respect. These garbage peddlers, more often than not, treat gamers and anyone who might call attention to their money printing projects on Steam as harshly as humanly possible. They delete any and all critique of their titles and their actions within the Steam forums, flag Steam user reviews, ban any and all dissenters, and do their best to remove any and all negative criticism wherever they might find it. Sometimes, these people even go so far as to issue false DMCA takedowns, privacy complaints, and even trademark strikes in an effort to hide from the truth and to cause harm to those that might seek to protect gamers from their garbage content and despicable personalities. Now, the game on your screen now is called Zombie Waiting. It is an exceptionally generic third-person action zombie game by MNB, and it is their first and so far only title on the Steam storefront. And as you can easily discern from what you see on the screen, it's complete garbage, and the simple fact that the developer has the unimaginable gall to charge $5 for something that I would be loath to look at even if they were to pay me to do so is completely mind-blowing. It is a mashup of different stock and basic assets, is barely functional, and is so full of bugs that it was everything I could do simply to keep playing this mess long enough to have gameplay footage for the video, let alone enough to get $5 worth out of the game. However, publishing a game that could optimistically be called absolutely terrible is not enough to earn a spot on this particular list. No, in order to accomplish that superlative level of despicable behavior, you have to take it a few steps further, and this developer has done just that. Now let's start off with some of the smaller things, such as Steam forum bans, again for even an imagined slight. This screenshot, posted by Mellow Online, showed him receiving a ban from the game's forums for quote, openly arguing with the developer, in which he posted an archive.is link that depicted a forum discussion started by the YouTuber English Teacher Plays, in which English Teacher Plays states, not sure what you're hoping to accomplish by flagging screenshots, videos, and reviews of your own game. Seriously, just take it off Steam if you are that embarrassed of it. And also, Mellow Online stated in that thread, the quality of the game is subjective, stating that it's good is not a stated fact, and also, even if the developer is working on the game, it doesn't make that a way to deflect criticism, doesn't change the fact that the game can still be interpreted as bad by customers. And he's absolutely correct. We also see John Romero HD parodying the developer's statement, and we'll get to him in just a moment as well. The forum thread deletions and user bans have been so complete that even as I'm recording this video, the discussion threads are completely empty, having all been purged by this developer in an effort to remove any and all negative critique. The only thread remaining is the pinned thread where the developer is stating that he takes suggestions for his quote game, but only if you don't argue with a moderator and only if you do so in what he states as an appropriate language. Now, in addition to removing any and all discussion threads from the game, the developer took it one step further and flagged English Teacher Play's Steam review for violating community guidelines, which is about as ridiculous as you might guess. And to be honest, this move I never really understood, as the only thing that these false flags do is lock the review so it cannot be altered by the reviewer. The developer also went so far as to post a response to the review stating, I think you're clumsy, and posted his own video, which has since been taken down, and unfortunately I did not get an opportunity to see what the video contained. And also, just to hang a lantern on this, we have two commenters on the Steam review that I would like to call attention to. First is the user Achilles that states the game is beautiful, you are noob and clumsy, which paints this person as either someone who has never had the good fortune of possessing eyes with which to see, or as a friend of the developer. The second is again John Romero HD, which stated, and I quote, has 0.1 hours played, writes negative review, which would normally be a potentially fair statement as under normal circumstances, 10 to 15 minutes would be nowhere near enough time with which to form an opinion on a game and its content. Although in this case, I personally feel that is more than enough time as the content you see in the first 30 seconds is essentially all there is, just different areas where you do the same thing. 
But it's ironic that John Romero HD called this 0.1 hours out as a negative, as he had posted his own positive review after also only playing the game for a total of 0.1 hours on record. Except his review is even worse because not only is it a lie, it was also a paid review. Yes, after apparently receiving backlash, John Romero admitted that he had posted a paid review without disclosing that to potential customers. Now, John Romero later deleted his review or had it removed and also changed the Steam user profile link, which made it take another full five seconds of searching to find John Romero HD. Now, he's still around, and from what I've seen, this paid review might have been a one-time thing, so I don't think there's any legitimate need to lambast him too much outside of the simple fact that failing to disclose a paid review is extremely dishonest and anti-consumer, regardless of the size of the game or its audience. In addition to all this, it was reported by English Teacher Plays that MNB had flagged all of his screenshots within Steam of the game and his video within Steam as violating community guidelines because what is the first rule taken from the page of Asset Flippers and Dirty Dev Playbooks? It's try to control the narrative. After all, we can't have anything actually showing people what to expect when they buy the game, and we most certainly cannot have a negative review out there. It might draw undue attention and cost us money from Steam trading cards and direct sales. Never mind the fact that tens of thousands of keys are being generated for free and are being sold on the Russian grain market. On top of that, the developer decided to take it one step further, and had filed a trademark complaint against the YouTube review of the game published by English Teacher Plays. Now, for those of you that are not aware, a trademark violation would come into play if someone were selling something, trying to pass off their brand as someone else's, or otherwise generally creating confusion regarding which brand is legitimate. A video game review or any form of critique, of course, does not in any way fall under any auspices of trademark infringement, and it is completely and utterly ridiculous, as you might think. The only reason why these dirty devs and asset flippers resort to trademark violations and privacy complaints now is that they can get the videos taken down and it's not a legally actionable position through YouTube's automated systems. And what I mean by this is the process behind a false or spurious DMCA complaint is, by comparison, a rather simple action. The person or entity that holds the copyright, if they believe that copyright is being infringed upon, can file a DMCA complaint through YouTube's automated systems that are in place in order to conform to the safe harbor provisioning for YouTube, and once filed, YouTube must remove the material within a timely manner that, while somewhat vaguely stated within the DMCA law, is generally within 24 to 48 hours. This copyright holder states under potential penalty of perjury that the content in question violates their copyright and the video is taken down. The person or party that posted the video then has a choice. They can either certify that the video does not infringe upon the copyright or that it falls under the provisions of fair use, which does include critical commentary and news. The other option is to take it on the chin and accept a DMCA strike on your channel, which will roll off in 90 days. However, with trademark violations, in the past, YouTube has taken down videos filed under those with no recourse left to the content creator, as YouTube treats those as a direct dispute between two parties, sort of playing the online platform version of the Prime Directive in Star Trek, where they refuse to involve themselves on what is clearly an internal matter of a foreign power. And it's also worth noting that in the trademark dispute where you're required to place your trademark registration number, Nazim Beiser of MNB posted the link to his game on the Steam storefront, which, I'm sorry, that's just not how this works at all. As a result of that completely inept understanding of how trademark law works, Nazim's filing came for naught, and the critique of zombie waiting posted by English Teacher Plays is still up and still viewable. However, the clarification statement was run through a Google Translate by Mellow Online, and that states, The bad comments of the quiche about the game. The class is insulting the game in the style of, Do not take this game, it is a terrible game. So what this means is, right there in the trademark violation complaint, Nazim Beiser is claiming that it is an infringement of his non-existent trademark because the critique of his horrendous game was a negative one, clearly determining that he was interested only in silencing any negative criticism involved in this mess that he tries to call a game. So I would advise everyone, obviously, to avoid this game like the plague. Not only that, but be aware of MNB and Nazim Beiser in the future. They're already off to a great start with their actions within this game to follow in the footsteps of all of the dirty devs and asset flippers that have come before them. Next thing you know, they'll have 50 plus titles on Steam. Now, I will be posting my own Steam review and Steam curator review of this title, and the links to those will be in the description below. And as always, please do let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below. 
Special thanks to the 20 and Up Club and to all of those that have stuck with me through Patreon's renewed nonsense. I will continue to maintain my Patreon as it's still the only real option out there at the moment in regards to integration with Discord and Twitch, but I will keep my eyes open for other avenues. If you would like to help take me one step closer to my dream of taking this channel full time, consider donating a dollar to my Patreon. We're currently halfway to our goal that, once reached, will mean I will transition away from my day job and will become a full time YouTuber, which will mean an increased output of videos and an increase in overall production quality. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.